so let's start so fluid mechanics will have two branches next in this line so first we call load statics and the second is called fluid dynamics so we have statics and dynamics as two separate branch if we talk about the weightage in the examination this will have 80 percent weightage so 80 percent is statics and statics and uh, 20 percent is dynamics so fluid statics uh, talks about the equilibrium of uh, fluid and this equilibrium may be either in inertial frame or in non inertial frame <laughs> and the fluid dynamics uh, is all about uh, motion of a liquid either in inertial frame or non inertial frame so it talks about motion of fluid and uh, it is not about the motion of fluid it's about the motion of the fluid uh, relative to its uh, neighboring wall or the surrounding so fluid i would say motion of fluid <laughs> relative to <clears throat> so unless the liquid is not moving with respect to its immediate surrounding we cannot say this as uh dynamics so for example if you take a water in a bucket and if you start running we cannot say fluid dynamics because the water is in motion no the water must be in motion with respect to the surface in contact so if the water is moving in a pipeline then we can definitely say it's a dynamics so if you talk about the gas moving from cylinder to the gas stove it's definitely dynamics so if there is a exhaust from the the engine of a vehicle then that definitely that is a dynamics so the process of respiratory process itself is a dynamic process so you inhale and exhale is a dynamic process and uh, the wind is a dynamic process you can think the wind as a flow of air molecules with respect to earth surface again it's a dynamic process the waves in a sea is a dynamic process the streams in the ocean is a dynamic in a sea yeah so all these things are dynamic process so dynamic process involves motion of uh, fluid fluid means liquid and gas both <laughs> So the word fluid has uh, taken from the concept of anything which can flow. That's why it's a liquid and gas both. So liquid 
So fluid dynamics will talk about both liquid as well as gas. Now, under the topic of statics, we have uh, a large variety of topics. So I can enumerate there, or, or better, I can go one by one. But just let me tell you in verbally that uh, we have topics like density. We'll first of all uh, try to understand the concept of uh, density. <laughs> the second will be pressure. We'll talk about pressure. We'll talk about the pressure in gas, pressure in liquid and uh, condition of equilibrium and so on after that uh, we'll move to the the acceleration part of the the force analysis the pressure i mean the torque analysis of uh, liquid and then we'll go for the acceleration of the liquid and we'll go for the equilibrium of liquid in the non inertial frame We'll do the pressure analysis again in the non initial frame, and then probably that will be the uh, end of the statics part. In between, we also be doing the uh, SHM part in fluid, and we can also do the yeah, of course, we will have buoyancy, our condition principle, Pascal's law, and all those laws will be there. So uh, we'll study about all those things. And again, some very conceptual question which uh, uh, demands very conceptual understanding of uh, the concept of pressure and all. So we'll analyze multiple questions actually, and uh, these questions will be in form of theory. So you will learn the questions and you will learn the theory at the same time. Dynamics will have not much, uh, it's just a uh, Continuity question and the Bernoulli question will be the two main ingredients of this dynamics. And we'll end with the viscosity. So viscosity will be part of dynamics only. So we'll start about the viscosity and then uh, uh, we'll study the Stokes law and uh, the Reynolds number, okay, which determines whether the, the flow is uh, streamlined or turbulent. Okay, and uh, these concepts are used uh, in determining the mileage of a vehicle. So most of the uh, manufacture of vehicle, they have a, a tunnel called the wind tunnel in which they put the their cars and a uh, high speed wind is blown. And what they do is they check the the mileage of the car. Okay. So all those testings are done in a lab kind of environment. The other application of uh, like the, uh, the you can say fluid dynamics is in designing the uh, like glasses of buildings. So nowadays you can see that uh, we have very tall buildings and to minimize the weight, we don't put uh, the bricks everywhere. So what they do is they use a lot of glass material to cover the, the building. If it is commercial, mostly it is covered. So those are just uh, glued in a frame, in a metallic frame, you can say. And the wind outside can tear it apart. So the pressure is the pressure difference is created by the the flow of wind, and uh, that will see that how. Uh, um, how much strength we need to hold the the glass pan okay together of course we use for the aerodynamics for the motion of planes okay the uh, missiles submarines so all this process demands the understanding of uh, fluid dynamics and uh, fluid statics as well so we have to cover all these ideas into uh, this chapter. So let's begin with the most uh, fundamental thing in this chapter, and that is density. So this 80% and 20% is for which exam? 
Vitage. That is Vitage for the JE actually. Okay. Okay, but the most of the questions, uh, like if if you talk about the last ten years, in the last ten years you will find that uh, eight times we have the statics problem, uh, or the dominance is statics problem, and only twenty percent dominance is of uh, dynamics problem. That's the idea. Okay. Yes. Start. So density, <coughs> uh, density in case of uh, uh, this uh, chapter, when we must find density in two ways. So there are two types of density that we need to know about. Give audible, guys. Yes. Yes, sir. The first is called density of object, and the second is called density of substance. So now the question is what is the density of object let's write by OBJ as notation this is rho sub. So first of all, when we say density, what is implicitly we don't mention is called volume density. So since your childhood, since you have been only hearing about so somewhere. Uh, it gets embedded in the brain that density is uh, something unique. But there are a variety of density in uh, physics. So you might have heard about a linear density. density as well, correct? Yeah, yes. so we have uh, linear density, we have <coughs> surface density, we have volume density, and some other way also to define density. So density is not a very uh, unique thing, it's a generic word. In fact, generic means it can be. Attaches as a suffix in variety of situation. So it is like a suffix actually. And uh, when we talk about density in this particular chapter, we talk about the volume density. So we are going to define density as mass upon volume. Per unit volume, what is the mass? So if you talk about the population density, then we talk about uh, how many uh, a person living on a given uh, unit area of uh, unit square kilometer of area. So in one square kilometer, how many person live is called the population density. So similarly, we define things like that. So the whole idea is, uh, the density of object is different thing. Density of substance is totally different thing. We need not to, I mean, take it granted that density only means density. And now density of uh, object. So if you buy some object, uh, it will have some mass. And if it is a close shaped object, then definitely it will have some volume. So you can, uh, you can dip in a, uh, completely filled jar and you can calculate how much water is I mean uh, thrown out uh, spilled out and then you can find the new volume the old volume you can know the 
volume of object. So the volume of the object means how much volume it can displace if completely submerged. That's the meaning of uh, volume of uh, object. So volume of object. So let's say if you take an iron ball. <clears throat> so you take an iron ball, uh, like a shell. with some thickness <coughs> and if you completely submerge into liquid then how much volume it can displace you can check so the volume will be same as the volume of the sphere of radius r correct yes yes so we can say the volume displaced is four by three Pi r cube. So this is the volume of object. But what about the density of substance? So the everything is made of some material. So the material will have some mass, so which is same as the mass of the object, nothing more. But the volume of substance is the <coughs> what is the actual volume of the material? which was used in the manufacturing of the goods or the object. So if I melt this iron shell, I'll get a very small volume of iron, correct? Yes. Sir. And volume of iron will be, I can say the volume of, uh, in this case, I can say if the uh, thickness I can take as T, which is very small. And if I say T is uh, very small than R, then we can say volume of substance, <clears throat> four pi R square into T. Yes, sir. So surface area into thickness is the volume. <clears throat> so now definitely if I put the volume of substance, then we can see that density of uh, substance is quite bigger than density of object in this particular case. But in general, it can be equal also. Because if it is completely filled, let's say if the solid iron ball is there, if we have the ball bearing made of steel, then the volume displaced and the volume of the steel will be equally, roughly equal, right? So in case of solid object, the density of substance and density of object will be same, but in general, the density of substance is more than density of object. So can you explain the substance one again? Substance means how much material is there, material present, the, the volume of material part, only material okay. part. So the hollow space must be excluded if we have any. So if you only consider the material part, then that, vol that volume is going to be very small, correct? Yes. Isn't it? <clears throat> So you go and buy a papaya, <clears throat> okay? So if you buy the complete uh, round papaya, I mean round means close papaya, not cut. And if you dip in a liquid, how much volume you can disperse? Same as the outer volume, right? Yes. But if you make the papaya juice, will you get the same amount of juice as you displace? No, sir. Because the papaya will have some empty space, right? Yes, sir. So that volume, the empty space volume will not be part of the juice, right? But because that cannot produce the juice. Oh. The whole idea is the substance is <clears throat> having less volume, but the papaya is having more volume. Do you realize this? Yes. So in the substance volume, what do we exclude? We exclude the, the empty part. We exclude the cavity part. Is this clear? Yes. So now every liquid will have some density. So whether something will sink or float only depends on density of liquid and 
density of substance or object what it should depend on think about it substance never so the sinking process of floating process depends on the object so you may make a cruise uh, of iron but the cruise will not sink because it is not it about is. the iron about the overall volume which also includes the empty space and uh, by creating more and more empty space we can decrease the overall <coughs> density and the overall density which we call the density of object <coughs> will determine whether the the ship will sink or float so we can take three cases if density of a object is less than density of liquid it will float and we put by submerging partially now if density of object is equals to density of liquid it will float but there is a difference by submerging completely <coughs> So it is like they have same density, and the third scenario if density of liquid uh, object. it will sink so the material really doesn't matter what matter is the overall density so what is the average density of human being greater than water a little bit so we are, we are as good as water in terms of overall density i am not talking about the density of your bone or the flesh or the empty space but the overall density is close to water on a slightly higher side and that enables you to swim easily because uh the extra weight you balance by the applying some force uh and that's it so sinking has nothing to do with the material that we used to make the object so material never matter what matters is only the density of object which is the overall density and uh, if the overall density is less than liquid it will float so floating having this concept that's it there's no other concept and what i said in the maybe in the last lecture i don't remember that it is a gravity which facilitates the the floating buoyancy float the so floating is basically a, a kind of a relative preference by the gravity so gravity the moment you go inside the water the gravity is confused what to pull first like to pull the water and to pull the <coughs> uh, uh, the person in the water so the whole idea is because the gravity is pulling everything down in that process you you feel that uh, the upward thrust the upward thrust is like the water is trying to replace you so water is trying to go down so gravity is pulling the water imagine this is the uh, chamber in the water yeah. and maybe this is a stone 
so gravity is pulling this also but at the same time the gravity is also pulling all the water above and all the water below correct so gravity is pulling everything towards its center and uh, in the due process uh, because the gravity is pulling more of the place which is close to the surface than the place above so the water preference will have the below the water will have more preference to be pulled down than the stone actually and that will lead to the generation of a relative push in the upward direction or you can say the push is kind of uh, uh, compensated by because we have two choices so earth will have two choice to push i mean uh, sorry to pull the stone and the water and there, there's a like a hundred percent attention is not going to the stone but imagine the stone is in the air so earth will have two choice to pull the air particles and the stone which will get more preference stone so you can see that uh, here the buoyancy is there but it is so negligible that we cannot feel it so it is not like that the air cannot create the buoyancy it's just like the the weight is so dominant over the the bond force that the air can create effectively we say there is no buoyancy but that is a wrong way of saying so you can think of a balloon as an object and you can see that it's very difficult for balloon to come down very rapidly why because the air in the atmosphere is creating a buoyancy for the balloon in a similar fashion as the water is creating for for human or for uh, uh, submarine or something like that so even the air is like a, a rarefied liquid you can say air is what a, a rarefied liquid in which the buoyant the bond effect is minimized i mean or maybe uh, it can be neglected but it is not zero you cannot say the bond effect of the air is zero so as we increase the density of air the buoyancy will become quite a dominant feature so we have buoyancy in air also we have buoyancy in uh, liquid also and the should and why you feel less of the gravitational effect in liquid because in liquid when you are in the liquid then the earth will pull water and you both so the whole attention is not on you and that is something which is fascinating which is the gravity only which makes us floating so we we'll see in the other way like archimedes way of thinking about the same then pascal's way of thinking about the same so we will come to across various other aspect of thinking about buoyancy but this is the most fundamental uh, thinking of buoyancy so imagine if i remove the gravity if i remove the gravity then the stone is not getting pulled and neither the liquid is getting pulled so should we expect any buoyancy no so we cannot expect a uh, buoyancy if you can think buoyancy this will say if there is a very crowded place very crowded place and uh, you are trying to walk but let's say the person everyone behind you trying to walk very fast than you so in the crowded place you will be definitely moving forward but all will push you backward in a way isn't it because they are trying to go ahead of you so in a way your forward motion is you can say slowed down by the person who is behind you because they are trying to move faster than you so they definitely will push you back and this happens in mostly in in trains if you try to walk you can see that the one who is i mean i mean if you have to get down at a station they push everyone back and remove and then go forward isn't it so that that thing is exactly similar to the gravity so gravity is like pulling everyone and in that due process someone is getting pushed back out and that is how the buoyancy came to picture so the absence of gravity is the absence of buoyancy that is the first fundamental that you need to remember that 
no gravity means no buoyancy no gravity means no pressure so these things are very important so whether we talk about the pressure or the, or the i mean the the buoyancy both are the consequence of gravity and if if we, if we remove the gravity this concept will go away which means in a freely falling liquid there is no buoyancy there is no pressure difference understood so we can say that as a theoretical on a theoretical note that the no gravity means no buoy and no pressure difference so gravity here means like uh, how the liquid feel so in a free falling liquid the apparent g will be zero So why there will be no pressure difference? So again, if you remember the pressure, the pressure is a consequence of gravity only. No? <coughs> we'll come to that. Okay, no, no. Just a minute. <coughs> So imagine, I mean, there is a stone of uh, 50 kg on your head. So will you feel pressure? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now you take the stone and jump in the ocean or the river. Will you feel more pressure or less pressure? Yes. Now you take the stone and start falling from the sky, like go to very high altitude using a flight and then jump. Will you feel any pressure? <clears throat> no, sir. The idea is if everything is free falling, then there is no relative compression or pressure. So if I am trying to go ahead of you and if you're stopping me, then the pressure develops, correct? But yes, if I'm if I'm moving as fast as you are moving, then why there is the pressure? So the pressure is a consequence of gravity, how? Because if I take a layer of water, let's say this is the layer, this is the boundary. Imagine like this. This entire water above this boundary is pulled by gravity, yes or no? Yes, sir. But who is stopping it? The layer here? Yes. So this layer is under pressure, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. In a free falling case, what will happen? The upper part will fall, the below will also fall. So anyone is not stopping anyone, right? So no part is stopping other part. So will there be pressure? Yes or no? No. no. So in a free falling case, the pressure concept will vanish. So you cannot think of pressure if it, the liquid is in free fall. And it just so as a consequence of Newton's laws of motion. Just tell me, you're saying something. So can you explain the high altitude example, that pressure, man? high altitude? Altitude? Yes, that if you... Um... If you jump. Huh. So you take a stone on your head and jump. Jump is free fall. So what is your velocity? Root to GH. Yes. What is the velocity of a stone? If, it, if it's in contact, then it should be the same. See, both are dropped free falling. If both are free falling, then both will have same accuracy. Yeah, same, same accuracy. 
are there is there any relative velocity or is it possible for the stone to go ahead of you no no sir no not no. possible is it pressing you no hello is there any pressure no no sir no the stone is pressing and you are pushing the stone up your head so technically there is no difference no it is not it's because you are moving with the same velocity so the stone is not pressing you at all yes sir the whole idea is if something is trying to go ahead of you and you are stopping it then the pressure will develop isn't it yes we have seen the like block diagram so we have done this in the friction chapter so if we have to block cap like this we compact the masses if mu is zero then what is the reaction force between them what is the reaction force not fine so both will go down with g and r yeah, when we take we combine mass right so the normal between them is what zero zero and if normal zero can we say there is no pressure yes mu zero no friction yeah the whole idea is if if one surface is not trying to go ahead of the other surface if something is not being stopped then why the pressure will come so pressure is just even think this way that the water is stopping the water i mean this is interesting now if i go to the next layer below it this layer should have more pressure or less pressure just tell me common sense more pressure less pressure so can i repeat the question if i draw this layer below the white layer so this layer will have more pressure or less pressure than this layer if we have two uh, layer, the layer red one layer will have more pressure why because the red one is balancing the greater weight ha huh. so as we keep on moving down what we expect more pressure it will more pressure. pressure the pressure will increase as we go down correct yes that is of my idea so that is what we are going to learn and uh, every question of uh, fluid mechanics can be solved by the help of newton's laws of motion so we are essentially going back to the laws of motion but the way we write will be quite interesting so the mass term will be replaced by density term because in liquid we prefer the density was writing not density the density the mass was writing because we cannot find the mass of the ocean right uh, we cannot find the mass of the river so writing in terms of uh, mass is meaningless in when it comes to the fluid so when it comes to fluid we prefer writing in terms of density and that difference let you feel it's a new chapter but essentially it's a old chapter in a new package so the replacement of mass by density will make a new formula to appear suddenly and you may think of it, we are learning something new but actually what we are learning is the chapter number 3 the newton's laws of motion is this clear So if you want to if you want to develop your intuition about this chapter if you want to answer any conceptual question about this chapter do not use the formula written rather use the laws of motion to get the intuition like here we can see clearly as we go down the layer then definitely the layer will be a more and more weight of the liquid above and therefore the pressure will increase okay it is clear yes no but this may be confusing now this whole idea which we just explained you may get confused like this so imagine if we create a vessel of shape like this and if this is filled with uh, some liquid you may get a bad idea something like bad idea what is bad idea
So if I draw the layers, if I draw the layers here again, this layer. So will this layer have same pressure throughout or different pressure? So if I talk about the pressure here or pressure here, so will they have same pressure or different pressure? Because the first question first, which layer will have more pressure? The first or the second? second yeah definitely and on the second layer you can see the the <clears throat> the weight the weight of the entire water the weight of the entire water I mean, this weight. can we say the weight of the entire water is uh, balanced by this layer yes or no Yes. No. This is the ability of the layer, correct? And if you really know the Newton's laws of motion, you can think this as an object, like a wedge. And can you do the ABD? Yes, you should. Now this way of thinking is not present. So if you cannot think in laws of motion, then it's difficult. If you look at this liquid as an object, like a wedge, is it only experiencing gravity or it is also experiencing something more than gravity? You can see the normal from the wall, it will have some downward component. So this layer is balancing what? This layer is balancing? not just gravity but also the component of normal yes it is clear but if i choose object differently so now i'm taking this object smartly which is not touching the wall so it will have the liquid pressure from this side so the this wall will have force from this side from this side which will definitely get cancelled and the weight of this part let's call mg in the normal something so now in this case the normal is the normal is exactly equal to the weight of the liquid correct so now how it happens is that the pressure remains the same so here the pressure here the pressure on this part of the layer, let's call it a, a, B, C, D. So the pressure on the BC part, and if I draw the same uh, point here, A, B, mute yourself, mute yourself. So BC, the pressure on the BC part here or here will be same or different. Please mute yourself. Harshit, I think that's your uh, mute yourself. So the, you can see that the BC part, whether I draw on a big wedge or on a small block kind of liquid, we cannot get different pressure. So the whole idea is, as you go on the slant side, the liquid height will decrease. You can see. So the liquid will create less pressure, but the normal will try to compensate the pressure because in one single layer, we cannot have two different pressure. So pressure by property on a single layer remains the same value. So at one level, we say the pressure throughout the level from A to D will be same. So whenever there is a difference of liquid height in different segment, that is duly compensated by the wall and that is how they maintain the pressure. So pressure is always maintained equal and the pressure is not just the consequence of the gravity, I mean the force by the gravity, it is also the, the force by the wall in this case. So if I have a liquid in a compactly put, a, you can say, a vessel and uh,
and uh, so think in terms of laws of motion there will not be any difficulty so let's say this this is the this is the piston of this uh, cylinder and the water is inside this is liquid part and this piston you can compress you can press further so what happens if i press this piston the pressure inside the liquid will be same as gravity due to gravity or something more than gravity so imagine there is no piston then the pressure here will be at this layer will be because of the weight of this part correct so if you draw a layer am i audible guys yes yes sir so if, if if i take this the red layer the pressure without piston will be equal to weight correct yes sir or due to the due to the i mean due to the weight of the liquid now if i press the piston further should we expect more pressure or less pressure at the same layer so the red one yeah the red one so if i press the piston then piston will create the normal reaction correct in a way you can think like object so definitely any excess pressure that we create will also add up to the existing pressure of the liquid and that is exactly what we call pascal's law so when you create the extra pressure or extra force when you have some contact force with the liquid then that will add up to the existing pressure inside the liquid and uh, this will happen throughout the volume of liquid not just one place it's everywhere and that is what we call the pascal's law so pascal's law said that okay any excess pressure that we develop gets transmitted throughout the volume of liquid without diminishing now this was the biggest revolution actually because if i can transfer what i'm creating at one place so let's say if i have a pipeline a long pipeline which goes from here to a long distance far away and this entire pipe is filled with liquid so it's filled with liquid everywhere and here we have a sensor and here we have some mechanism so if i press the water here because the water is confined it cannot move this extra pressure that you create will transfer from here and the person here can feel the pressure understood so it is a very good communication medium in fact we can establish a communication across the region just by creating the water tube definitely we have a better way that's why we are not doing it but this could be a way to at least create a warning sign that something goes wrong you can understand and then therefore we have actually now this uh, many hydraulic sensors not only that the hydraulic lifters work in the similar fashion they create pressure at the end of the tube and because the tube is filled with liquid essentially water so the pressure gets transported everywhere and that is how the jcb works okay so all the crane or lifting mechanism is essentially due to hydraulic lifts so what they do is they create pressure at one point and the the good thing is that if you have 10 different tubes so i you know to apply force everywhere so what i will do is i will just push this part so let's say this is throughout connected with a single this is the fluid mechanism and see the beauty of this the fluid so you create a pressure at one place this is you press it here and whatever extra pressure you create that that will transfer the here also here so in a way this is like a tentacles and the pressure will reach every boundary so if you release this part it will create the force here if you release this part it will get force here so by pressing at one place i can 
actually activate various points and that is the beauty of the fluid based dynamical uh, structures so they are very useful because you apply force at one place you create the extra pressure and because of this property of transmission of extra pressure throughout the volume we can create its effect anywhere we want and that is how the the i mean they work on this very basic principle of pascal's law so we call it pascal's law but this is something very common sense so what we need to understand that a liquid will have its own pressure because of the gravity and whatever you do above the gravity will add up to the existing value and that is how okay we have various name in the in this chapter okay so let me move this part so in this chapter if you have the eye of the the very basic eye, you need to have very basic observation skill just like laws of motion so if you can think in terms of laws of motion if you can convert the liquid into some sort of object by creating the hypothetical boundary then the analysis will be really easy so all those things we learn one by one in, in detail uh, so let's start with the so i think i have given the enough intuition we can start with the theory so intuition part is clear how fluid works yes so do you realize that uh, that uh, uh the pressure and the buoyancy is a concept cons i mean consequence of gravity yes do you realize yes or no yes yes sir. so let's say if, if i if i go to gravity free space and then i i need buoyancy there what i'll do what i can do so imagine if i give you a a tube of water so you might have seen a tube of water uh, which is sold in a the market they put some glittery inside and that looks nice have you seen a tube of water yes sir and what they do is they leave one bubble one empty bubble is space and as you tilt the uh this tube the bubble will move up and down right if you make it like this the bubble will go like this and again what we how we play so we if the we know bubble is here so we just invert it then it starts rising so bubble is not rising because bubble is empty space so the water is coming down and so it is pushing the bubble up that is exactly the concept of buoyancy but imagine we are in a situation where there is no gravity let's say this is the question so this is a tube filled with liquid and this is the air bubble you can think like like a lighter object than the liquid because air bubble will have some air and there is no gravity so how i can move this bubble from here to here what i should do to move this any case And, and there is no gravity so if you tilt down probably nothing will happen if there is no gravity then water is not pulled down right so water is there where it is yes sir so what will happen to bubble? can we apply force in the no you cannot go inside the i mean tube and apply the force you can so no, force right. the press the tube where the bubble is so no no you, you cannot press the tube it's made of glass So think about how to create the artificial gravity. We have done this part. So we we have done this part. How to create the artificial gravity? 
So if I start rotating the tube like this, the bubble uh -huh. will come. Because once you start rotating this tube like this, the liquid will try to go away because of the you can say centrifugal force. And because the liquid will try to liquid will try to go on the right, the bubble will go left, 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 left. So bubble will eventually settle on where? Near the axis. Okay. So we have moved the bubble by simple laws of physics. So if you can think in this way that uh, what is exactly gravity, what is exactly buoyancy? I mean, of course, there's, there is a formula which may be confusing, but always think about all this concept without formula in terms of something very fundamental. And then you probably will have the right answer to every question without getting confused. So here, what we did was we created artificial gravity uh, maybe you can say a variable gravity where G was omega square R. You can say like this. And then let's say the direction of G is downward. The moment you create the G downward, the bubble will go upward. This is the direction of bubble motion, correct? Do you realize this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The other way is like if you want to make it left, you can accelerate the tube right. So apply force here and run. So apply the force on the tube and run is on a straight line. Yes, the bubble. So the bubble will go uh, backward. Okay. Just the moment. No, 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 bubble will not go backward. Uh, No, no, no. In this case, it will not go. If you accelerate left, then it will go. But if you accelerate right, right, then all liquid will try to go left. So if the liquid will try to go left, then bubble will remain right only, no? Yeah, sir. Yeah. So it means to move on the right side, you must apply, I mean, you must accelerate on the right side. So bubble will move in the direction of acceleration, not opposite. Correct? Yes, sir. So if the bubble, because here, what we took the case was in rotation, the liquid was trying to go away, correct? So in terms of inertia, we can say every point was accepting towards center. The centripetal acceleration was towards the center, right? So the bubble always moves in the direction of acceleration in the ground front, of course. So to move the bubble on the left, we must accelerate the tube towards the left. If you do so, the bubble will start accelerating towards the left. Why? Because if you try to accelerate the tube towards the left, the all water inside the liquid will try to go right, correct? Because And because the water is a denser, so it will come right and will push the bubble left. And eventually the bubble has to settle. All the water will settle on the right of the bubble. So all liquid will settle towards the right of the bubble because bubble is lighter object. And that is very I mean, common intuition. So this there was a very famous J problem a long time back. So if we have a, a what do we have? So let's say we have an aquarium. And in this aquarium, we have two bobs suspended, one from the top and other from the bottom. I mean, that is very interesting. So the top one is definitely the heavy one. That's why it's suspended downward. And the lighter must be some sort of uh, balloon kind of thing. So it is like this. It will have some gas like this. 
so if i accelerate this uh, vessel towards right uh, how the hanging and the floating part will tilt the right or left both right both left one right two left sir first one will move uh, still towards uh, left and uh, the second one will tilt towards right Correct. Yes, sir. So eventually, if you see later on that, you can see that the empty part will move on the right, and the heavy part will move on the left. And this was a J question. Like, of course, I can prove it mathematically with the rigorous equation, but we can answer many questions just conceptually. And what is interesting is. No matter what, the mass of the bob is the angle will be same. Now this part requires method to prove, but this is conclusive. So whenever we have the object, I, in a way I can say if we have a density of liquid as rho, and uh, this is the density d one. This is the, I mean let's say the bubble is also having air of density d two. so anything lighter than liquid will go in the direction of acceleration and heavier will go against the direction of acceleration this is what you can think of understood yes so you can think in terms of uh, i mean uh, centrif i mean what you can say pseudo force also so because the d1 is more than liquid so it will have more backward push by the pseudo force so the maximum force will be expressed by the hanging part than the liquid and than the bubble so the preference wise the water will go left and the bubble will go right preference wise the bob will go left and the water will go right okay so it is all about you can think everything in terms of gravity so the acceleration will push the heavier thing backward understand so if we have acceleration towards right everything heavy will go left and heavy everything which is lighter will go right in the liquid that's simple for it is this clear yes okay so <clears throat> if i just write up like a situation in which we have a, a water in a container And these all are just conceptual question which you can see in JE advance or mains everywhere. It's, it's spread, and these questions are pretty easy. Like, yeah, actually very easy. so imagine this case scenario we have two liquids of density rho1 and rho2 now even if i give you no clue can you guess which density is more rho1 or rho2 so which one is more denser the first liquid or the second liquid second liquid is more dense for than first definitely because gravity will have preference to the keep the denser of it close to itself correct so anything which is denser will be close to gravity and that's why the molten plasma which is mostly iron as a metal is in the core of the earth so core of earth is having the densest element which was available on the earth in abundance so we have all the uh, you can say heavy metals in the core of earth and as you go away from the earth center the lighter will be near the surface so we have the aluminum in the surface because that's lighter and now you find aluminum as solid but long time back it was just a gas and liquid so gravity naturally filter the denser of it closer to itself and lighter away from itself and therefore on the earth crust what we find is the mostly 
we have a layer called Cl. We have magnesium layer, right? So lighter objects are found in the Earth's crust, and that is because of the nature. Just gravity is doing the natural filtering process. Now, if you remember that sun, once time, once it was just a big fireball and there was no planet, just we have only one thing called sun. So when the various part from the sun detached and went away from the sun, in the due process, they took away some gases or you can say some elements, but the lightest of all elements, which is called hydrogen, because of the excessive gravity was part of sun most. So even today, the, the fuel for the sun is the hydrogen because the nuclear fusion reaction takes place there. And the fusion combines the H atom into helium and the, the loss of mass in the due process creates the energy and that is how we are getting the energy from the sun. So that is very much limited, but the, the good news is that it will be up to 400 billion years. And because our life is very short, so we are happy. The sun is like a permanent object. But even sun is not permanent. So after 400 billion years uh, and much before that, the life on Earth will be destroyed. But that's that's okay. Don't worry about that. So you will be living a good life. Uh, and Earth will know more, don't worry. So Earth will also get destroyed and everything will collapse. But at the same time, there is a hope that some new star may born. And then after 400 billion years, the light from the new star, which is maybe billions of years away, will eventually reach the Earth. Don't worry. So maybe from distance galaxy, some light ray has left the distance and may be arriving here because light is also having some velocity. So it may take some light years to reach the Earth because it is, let's say, billions of light years away. So light will reach from billions of light years away in billions of years, that's simple. So the idea is simple, uh, gravity will do this filtering. So now let's say if I put some object here, Even this object will have some density. So what we can say about D? Is D denser than rho 2 or less than rho 2? Or what about what is the ratio between rho 1, rho 2, and D in terms of inequality? So D is greater than rho 1 and D is equal to uh, less than less rho 2. Yeah, so D is less because it's not completely submerging, so it's floating, right? So D must be less than rho 2. So D, if you remember the first line, first page, yeah, I hope you can remember this. So partially submerged, so density is less. Completely submerged, it's equal. And it will sink, that's a different story. You can see that the stone, if you drop this stone from the top, the rho one cannot stop it because the rho one is less than D, so it cannot stop it. So eventually it will enter the rho two, but because rho two is more than D, so it will stop by partially submerge. That's it. And so we have a relation that rho one is and that's common sense. Okay. So we should arrive at a various relationship without using any mathematical formula by common sense. And that is how you can develop the intuition about this chapter. So always think in terms of uh, laws of motion, equilibrium, and don't try to bring the formula in between because here the formula is quite confusing and quite misleading uh, at most of the times. So if you try to answer using the, the formula, uh, things will be very bad. Okay. Just.
Okay. <clears throat> So now we'll talk about the the various types of density. So types of densities. And not types of density, rather I would say calculation of density of homogeneous. Mixture. So calculation of a density of homogeneous mixture. So, so we say the density of mixture is total mass upon total volume that's there is no big formula just add the mass of everything which you are going to mix to create the homogeneous mixture so this homogeneous mixture is mostly in terms of alloys and mostly it is used in the creation of a, a material with better uh, you can say features like the interesting ability the strength, the ductility, hardness. So a right mixture will create the right property. And therefore, the pure metals are of less use than the alloys. So we always mix in certain proportion to derive the desired feature out of them. Okay, so this is important. So density of mixture we can write total mass on total volume. But this can be written in variety of ways. Let's say if I give, tell you that uh, we have two objects, uh, M1 and M2 are the mass, and uh, V1 and V2 are their volumes, then uh, the density of uh, such mixture will be equals to the sum of mass upon sum of volume, and we're done. So that's pretty easy. I mean, not a big deal, right? Now, if, uh, <coughs> if the if the mass is uh, given along with density, so what is not given to you is volume, but that is pretty okay. The density of mixture can it is the sum of mass <coughs> upon m1 upon rho1 plus m2 upon rho2. Exactly. Now we can take a special case if uh, rho one, uh, sorry, if m one question. If I say m one question, so if we add in equal mass, then what is the density of mixture? Two rho one rho two by rho one plus rho two, correct? So let's say if you take one kg of copper and one kg of iron and to make a alloy by melting and mixing it properly, then the resultant, the alloy which you have made will have density equals to twice the density of the product of density upon summation, which is called the harmonic mean of the two, correct? This is the HF. Is this clear? So yes, the sir, HM, yeah. HM is what? HM is less than the least value? Uh, maybe, no. In this case, 2 is multiplied, so no, we cannot say this. Anyway. So the density will be uh, more than the less value and less than the more value. Anyway. So we can put this into one single bracket, square bracket, box. The case 3 will be if uh, density is given and uh, volume, then what is the row mix? Hmm? 
रिलेशनशिप and there is a famous question uh, from the history that uh, the crown of the uh, which empire i mean so it is found that this crown is not made of pure gold and how archimedes was archimedes was able to figure it out that it's not made of pure gold by the simple concept of density so how to know that the density can determine all these things so let's say if we have object of mass n and let's say uh let some some question i'm trying to create a question so let us assume that an alloy is made or by mixing two metals of density ro1 and ro2 okay in some proportion so the proportion is not given if i said the let's say if x uh and uh, total mass of alloy is m given its total volume v find the proportion of each metal so what is given to us is density of each element and the total volume and the mass we have to find the proportion that uh, how much you added the first element and how much you added the second element that is the you have to find the fraction So how we can solve this? So we can write the equation v equals to what we can write. So let's say x. Uh, you can write like this. So mass of metal one is x. So mass of metal two will be how much? M minus six. You can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Go ahead.
Done, guys? No, sir. So what we can say the mass of if I say mass of metal one is x and other is m minus x. What is the total volume of the substance? X by the one. And it is given that this net volume is v. That's it. So we can write one by x, one by row, one minus one by row two equals to v minus m by row two. So we got x. That's us. So you got one answer in the if you subtract from the other you will get the mass of the other end so so archimedes did the same thing he said that okay it's not made of pure gold and how he was so confident it is not made of pure gold because the density of pure gold was known to him and in fact the density of other uh, pure metals was also known to him and <clears throat> what he did was he took the the crown of the king it dipped inside the water and the water was in a completely filled uh, i mean vessel so whatever water came out he measured its volume and that was the volume of crown now if that is the volume of crown so multiplying the uh, or sorry dividing the mass of the crown by the volume should give you the density of the gold but rather it was different so he came to know okay, there is some mixture here it is not made of pure gold. So that is how, I mean, that's a famous legend actually. Uh, no one knows the, the reality. It's just a story. And it's uh, interesting. Maybe it is used for teaching purpose, but that's good. So the question is clear to you guys? Yes. So knowing, the, knowing the volume of the entire object and uh, density of individual value, you can actually understand what is the, the mixture actually. And the formula is clear. So you can see that if it is pure, let's say if the if it is only made of the uh, second element, if it is made of only row two, then the volume must be m by row two only, correct? And this will become zero. So automatically it completes the definition also. So if a row one is <coughs> if something is only made of row two, then the volume must be equal to mass by row 2 and therefore uh, if i substitute here it will become zero which means yeah there is no first element i hope this is clear yes okay <coughs> so Okay, so we can go next. So in fact, there is a question in SC1. If you want, you can uh, try that question. You can give me that question. I hope you all have SC1. Yes, sir. So open the chapter of uh, fluid mechanics. It is uh, before the properties of matter chapter. <laughs> and uh, the question is uh, question number nine and ten. So solve question number nine and ten. If, if you don't have question, I can send by taking the. <laughs> so the ornament one yeah yeah correct, correct.
So you all have the book, uh, or shall I send it? Everyone there? Yes. Yes, sir. Solve this. So one upon density is so specific gravity, right? No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Let me teach you this uh, the thing called specific gravity. I might have taught you in the dimension, maybe somewhere there. Or might have learned specific gravity is density of object. Oh, upon density. density of water at uh, four degrees Celsius, which is one actually. So this value is one gram per cc. So if you if you know the specific gravity, you can convert it to gram cc. So you can say density of object is a specific gravity into one gram per, per cc. So this is the so you can think this is a, as a unit in gram per centimeter cube or a milli. I mean this is uh, ml gram per ml. Okay, this is a milli. So the other way of writing is rho object equals to a specific gravity into density of water. So you can write like this. So the volume would be two volume. Pardon? The volume would be two because displacement. Two gram. What is given? So that thirty six. Yeah, whatever you are displacing. That thirty six gram air gram is in water so two gram so the two gram that will be the volume 
no what is what is given like i haven't read the question tell me the, what is given is it the volume volume uh, mass of the mass. water displaced given oh mass what is mass read question please Okay, do the manipulation because see, unless we not learn the manipulation, it's difficult. So that's the easiest part of all. But you should know how to solve.
sir then 33.3 and 2.7 you can check the answer you can check the answer and tell me question number 9 and 10 right So the answer is uh, 2.2 gram and 10 is 0 0.112 centimeter cube. Sir, I got the mass of copper and uh, gold. Yeah, how much? Uh, so that would need 2.7 and 33.3. Uh, so you can convert into the desired unit. Yeah? So, uh, gram. so ornament wing 36 gram in air and waist 34 gram in. Okay, okay. So this is the where you got wrong. So, okay. So the loss in weight is equal to buoyancy actually. Hmm. Okay, so that part is the okay. So you got confused. Yeah. So the loss is two gram, and this must equal to two gram. Is this V rho into accessing due to gravity? This is gram. So two gram and uh, v rho. Okay, that's okay. This will be form of buoyancy. So volume will be equal to this is rho of water, which is one. Yeah, no. Okay, anyway. So you can just add volume equals to two ml or two centimeter cube. So just take v equals to two centimeter cube and then try to <coughs> solve it. So volume of the ornament is how much? Two centimeter cube. Then not, not try to solve this. So this is the volume of object. The entire ornament is the object. So volume of object is? So I think this should be easy now. Maybe you had to So got it. You're not getting the answer? Yes, the ninth one is wrong. Good. To solve ten tenth also. Sir, in ninth one, how to like how to write the okay. so again? I have to read the question. What is the question? Tell me, just tell me the question. I'll, I'll stop. So read the question for me. Uh, an ornament weighing 36 gram in air weighs only 34 gram in water, assuming that some copper is mixed with gold to prepare the ornament find the amount of copper in it specific gravity of gold is 19.3 and that of copper is 
then so if x is the copper then the volume of copper is how much x by 8.9 the volume of uh, gold is m minus x by 9.3 so the total volume is how much 2 and m is given as 36 right It's a bad calculation which you can do for sure. So how much is that? Two into eight point nine into nineteen point three. Uh, Minus for that two into eight point nine into nineteen point three minus thirty six into eight point nine divided by uh, nineteen point <coughs> three minus 8.9 answer is 2.25 this is the answer so then that in the question uh, they have also given that weighs only 34 gram in water so 34 gram into water means like if you dip something in water it will be lighter right we know this concept yes right? so the loss in weight point force okay so once you we'll learn about this don't worry so that's why i gave i have given the volume of the entire object as v which i have calculated and i give it to you it's true okay so the second yes, i'm getting 0 0.26 but that's not answered sir but i did the that if there is only gold present now, then and the cavity and the cavity. Huh. So 33.75 divided by the 19 point plus volume of that cavity is equal to 2, right? Volume of the cavity is 2. It's, is it given? So no plus volume of cavity. We have to find the volume of cavity. So total volume is equal to 2, no? Yeah, yeah, correct. So volume of cavity, V cavity plus uh, mass upon uh, uh, density of gold is two yes. and i got mass is 33.75 from the first no, mass, mass, mass is given no? mass is 36 the so gold mass no you have to find so, gold no but the question is same no? it's the same mass but uh, instead of copper they're asking cavity correct what they're saying read the question carefully what, 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 what question is it demanding and what it is saying there is no copper in the yeah mixture. there is no copper so yes but and, there are some cavities and there might be some cavities left inside the ornament okay then calculate the volume of cavity left that will allow the weight given in that problem uh, so that's okay now so so the mass of the new object is 36 only. So VC okay. plus 36 by 19.3 is equal to 2. And this will be how much? Minus 36 divided by 19.3. This turns out to be 0 0.134. But if you take the old one, yeah, 36, yeah, maybe, yeah, we have to subtract this part. So this is not 36, this is basically, thirty-six minus, okay, this so is the weight that we calculated in the previous part, 2.225. But 
थ्री पॉइंट सेवन फाइव एंड नाउ वी हैव टू माइनस ब्रैकेट थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट सेवन सेवन फाइव डिवाइड बाई नाइनटीन पॉइंट थ्री Oh, that is coming. Uh, no, okay. Question is saying mass of the the new ornament is same as old or something different? Is there any language? I have to read the question now. Okay. No, there is no other material than gold. So only gold will come. Huh? Okay, so uh, you should have say complete thing. So he is arguing that uh, nothing is added. So it means uh, the same question, same mass. So this will be thirty six gram only. So the volume of cavity plus volume of gold equals to that's it. And if you get from here, uh, will be point one three, which is of course not matching the I mean it's for answer, but this is the right answer. Don't worry. Uh, one zero point one one two. So you can just convert it to no, not convert. Uh, right point one three. That's the right answer. It is clear. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. So we can go to the next one. Okay. So the next concept is very simple. Pressure due to liquid column. So if we have a liquid, not that flat liquid. So we know above the liquid we have atmosphere. You can always think atmosphere as another liquid with a very rarefied uh, density. So if you make the density of this liquid as very small. And this liquid is extending from the earth surface till the infinity. I mean, like till very uh, large, I mean, greater height. So this entire liquid is also pulled by the gravity. I mean, this the entire atmosphere is also pulled by the gravity. But the but the gravity cannot bring it down because the surface of water is stopping it. You can think this way. And therefore. <clears throat> this entire atmosphere will exert a pressure on the surface of the earth and we call that atmospheric pressure pat so pat is the, again the effect of gravity only <coughs> and gravity is pulling the atmosphere which is stopped by the earth surface by the water by the solid and therefore we we just name it and we call it pat at the sea level it will have some value as you go above maybe in the mountain area then it will have some lesser value so things will be like this so we have pressure which is varying as per the altitude of the geographical location compared to the sea level and uh, okay so it will have many consequence 
So PATM is something like a constant. We assume okay the, the atmospheric pressure is roughly same over the Earth's surface, and uh, the value of PATM we take as seven sixty millimeter of mercury column. If you take the column, so we'll come to that. Why it is the unit? Why we take this as unit? Or uh, we can say uh, which is one point zero one ten to the power of five pascals. Pascal is a unit of Newton uh, upon meter square. Or you can say this as 76 centimeter of Hg. So you can call it uh, <coughs> PATM and uh, all this. These are the values in which we can express. So there are some <coughs> other units also. So I think we also call this 760 tor, right? Yes, sir. The Tor is in the honor of the uh, great uh, physicist and mathematician Torricelli. And uh, he had a, a great contribution in the fluid mechanics. Most of the fluid dynamics uh, will have the origin in the Europe, especially near about the France region. Because the entire city in the, you can say like uh, Venice and uh, other places having the waterways. So the entire city is built in a, on a water, you can say. So they had a lot of, uh, I mean, scientific development in the world of flow. And in today's time, the entire, you can say the uh, Computational fluid dynamics is a now separate branch in uh, for higher cities, and people are opting for it, and uh, it is one of the sort of branch in Western world. So not in, of course, in India, uh, very few scope is there. So most of the like professor, I mean, you can say scientists or mathematician or physicists, all belong to the almost same family. In fact. They are part of only one institute in uh, France. That is something Polytechnic. Uh, some name is there. And uh, I, I was fortunate to have one of my students uh, who did his PhD from that institute, whose alumni are uh, Bernoulli and all those things. You can imagine the reputation of that institute. So this is the P atmospheric part. And then if you go further deep inside the liquid, And if you want to know the pressure, so the pressure is defined as the per pinnacle force upon area. I'm not going uh, writing in detail, plus simple definition we know. We have done this in elasticity. So let's say if I want to know the pressure at a depth, what I do is I will just create a flat surface near this location. And uh, this is the flat surface in the location. I want to know the pressure. So what I do is I complete a, a cylinder. Maybe like this. So if you want to study calculus uh, or uh, if you want to study uh, something in computer, I mean, uh, numerical computation or fluid dynamics, advanced fluid dynamics, computational fluid, or anything which is having the origin in uh, uh, math mathematics, uh, especially math means the applied mathematics, the calculus based mathematics, then the best place is to go to France. And if you want to pursue something in the field of computer science, or electronics, then you should go to uh, America. If you want to study about the machine or mechanical engineering and how different stuff works, you should go to Germany. So every country is not good for everything. So depending on the choice, if you want to go for the like mechanical system inventions, go to countries like Sweden, uh, Germany, 
if you look at the most of the uh, the fittings which comes into india are from the german brand correct so you can also understand that okay what kind of uh, knowledge they have uh, in abundance and what you can learn from them actually and if you want to learn politics come to india okay you are in india only no worries. so we are good with at least one thing coming back to the question now what is how to find the pressure so pressure is basically we have to find the weight of this liquid so if i choose the area of cross section as a and uh, density is rho so you can easily find the weight of the cylinder so weight of the liquid is how much so the weight of the liquid is tell me guys am audible rho v uh weight is mass rho h mg rho h okay rho h g yes correct so now if i want to know the pressure at a due to liquid column i'm i'm not talking talking about the pressure to everything only how much liquid column is able to create so i can say weight upon area correct and as it is rho g h but that is not the total pressure so we call something called total pressure and the total pressure is the atmospheric is the free pressure that you can get out of nothing so the p atm you can just add and then add what liquid can create further okay so there are two types of pressure liquid pressure and the total pressure the liquid pressure is only due to the liquid column and you can see the fancy we are writing in terms of density okay so now the world of uh, physics uh, this word this particular chapter will have the density representation of everything and of course that is a nice way so this is the pressure calculation due to the liquid but let's talk about something more detailed in terms of uh, how fluid behave i think i have explained this part probably so how fluid behave and that is what we need to understand uh, at microscopic level so let's try to get the intuition of pressure due to the liquid so if you are inside liquid if you are in that liquid then what you should know about uh, the pressure of the liquid so what we know about the pressure of the liquid is simple that pressure due to liquid first of all will act on the surface of the object and the pressure is always perpendicular to the surface irrespective of its orientation the so pressure okay due to liquid always remain perpendicular to the surface irrespective of its orientation okay and therefore uh okay first of all the pressure is not exerted by the liquid it is exerted by the liquid very close to the surface so only the liquid layer which is next to the surface will exert the pressure and anything which is very close will only hit a right angle so at a microscopic level what is happening we don't know but we say at a macro level we say the the pressure is such that it will always hit in the surface at right angle 
no matter how the surface looks like. So for complex surface like this, it will keep on changing. So pressure is having the beauty that it can change its direction as per the surface. And because it can change the direction as per the surface, so there is no specific direction for the pressure. You design a surface, it will change the direction. So the pressure will always act like this, no matter how the object is. Okay. And we just learned something. What we learned? We learned that pressure will increase with the, the depth. So definitely the pressure at the bottom is going to be bigger than pressure at the top. Because of the simple relation of the or dependency on the height, correct? And you can see clearly that the pressure, because it will grow with, uh, with what? The depth. So the upward pressure is going to be dominated than the downward pressure because the bottom will create a bigger pressure in the upward direction than the downward pressure to the topmost part, the top, topmost part of the body. And this difference of pressure, which we have created by virtue of gravity, that you should remember, the difference of pressure will create the net upward force. And this net upward force we call gravity, we call buoyancy in, in uh, this chapter. Buoyancy is the name uh, for this reason. So this was actually discovered by the Pascal uh, and much later than the Archimedes. Archimedes was before the BC, I mean, 300 BC roughly. And Pascal was uh, thousands of years later. So you can imagine that uh, what Archimedes gave as an intuition took enormous time to be realized by the today's or modern physicist and mathematician. So Archimedes was much ahead of his time, not just much ahead, but extremely ahead of its time. And Einstein is said to be the Archimedes of modern era, I mean, uh, modern, what to say, era. So, so Einstein was the Archimedes of modern era. He was so advanced. And Archimedes himself is a legend. So his knowledge before in any invention, before any laws in physics, before any anything in the world was just beyond imagination. So Archimedes, Euclid, Leibniz, okay, oh no, Leibniz much later on. Leibniz is the contemporary of Newton actually. <laughs> anyway, so the, that is the property of pressure and that is why the, 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 the creation of buoyancy is due to the difference of this pressure. So bottom always expands more than the top. So no matter where you, you are in the liquid, your, your bottom will be always under greater pressure than the top and the bottom pressure is going to be upward. So it really doesn't matter where you are in the liquid. What matters is the, the difference of pressure. And when the difference will stop getting created in the liquid, so if the liquid is in the free fall, we know that density will, uh, sorry, pressure will not vary. So in the freely falling situation, there is no concept of pressure. Understood? Yes. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Actually, you don't. In a free falling case, this uh, red plate, imagine this red plate as a some surface, the water above this plate will free fall and so the layer, it means layer is not getting pressed. Correct? Yes, sir. And therefore, the pressure will never be created. And therefore, if there is no pressure, there is no buoyancy because buoyancy we define in terms of pressure difference. Okay. Or you can say the force, the net upward force due to the difference of pressure is called buoyancy. So we'll see all those. Things. So now we have learned about the pressure in a liquid and it depends on the height. And for a given height, we'll have the net pressure equals to the P atm plus. 
the field to the liquid and the liquid pressure is depending on the height accessible to gravity and the density of the liquid so all these things you have to keep in mind okay fine uh, or we can do something here maybe has space so knowing this concept we can do something called uh, barometer so what is barometer a device to measure atmospheric a device to measure the atmospheric pressure it's a very simple device so what we do is we take a liquid and you take a inverted uh, <coughs> You can see there's a tube which is inverted, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we do something. So we create some kind of vacuum pump. So we vacuum this tube and we remove all the air present. So if you remove all there, let's say, let's take the case when we have air. And when we have air, same as the pressure outside. So the air here is at pressure PATM. And let's say you simply take a tube and you invert near the liquid. So the air in the tube, which was already present, will also have the PATM and we will also have the PTM. So nothing will happen. It's simplified word. Nothing will happen. The moment you start sucking the air from the tube, the pressure within the tube will start dropping, correct? Yes, sir. So the atmosphere is pressing the liquid everywhere. It was pressing the liquid within this tube but now the atmosphere is stopped here glass tube is stopping the atmosphere now there is pressure in the air. so as a result what will happen the liquid will be inside yeah and now it will rise Because it's a vacuum, so there is no pressure. So here the pressure is zero. And the liquid will rise up to some height h. Yes, but the pressure at the level PATM, correct? So can we write PATM equals to P plus rho gh? And because P is zero. In the case which we are considering, this will be equal to. So now making P as exact zero is impossible. It's because we cannot create the perfect vacuum. But it is okay. Good approximation that P is roughly zero, and then the P atmospheric is equal to rho gh, and therefore the h we can write as P atm upon rho gh. So how much the liquid will rise depends on its density. So if it is a really denser object, it will rise less. And if it is lighter liquid, it will rise more. So no matter what is the height and what is the density, the product is going to be constant because the PAT is fixed and G is fixed. This is a constant quantity. And therefore, the H into rho is a constant. So we can say if you use the mercury column,
or if you water polo so if you use mercury as a liquid then it can rise up to 76 cm this is what we know so when we say the at atmospheric pressure is 76 this is a 76 density of mercury is 13.6 the water we don't know and the density of water we can take as 1 the h w terms are to be if you multiply this is 10.3 meters you can imagine that if you want to measure the atmospheric pressure in terms of water we need a barometer tube of height at least 10.3 meter which is of course not a feasible thing to do and that is why we do not measure the pressure in terms of Uh, centimeter of water or meter of water because it is <coughs> unreasonably i mean large so now this is the barometer which is helpful in finding the atmospheric pressure and we can do some calculation like this and we also saw that if you use the water uh, so what is the biggest length of the straw that you can use to drink 10.3 meter vertically correct so if the straw length exceeds this value no matter how much you suck the air you cannot get the liquid so how you are able to drink using the straw because you suck the air and so the water is i mean the not water, the juice or whatever is pushed by the atmosphere and it goes to your okay, mouth so now you know how the straw works hopefully yeah. yes so based on this straw thing we have a a very famous device called the siphon tube so siphon tube not it's the siphoning is action so we can call the siphoning siphoning i don't know what is the correct way to pronounce it is also used in case of some uh, embezzlement some fraud so let's say you siphon the money from the bank to your account some kind of fraud is also this, this word is used in variety of uh, literature also so what we do in siphoning is we take the liquid from one vessel and we put in the other vessel and we don't do anything we do simple construction of the design of the vessel and uh, this concept is uh, very often used by the travelers on the road okay. so if you are if you are driving your car let me give you some life facts huh? if you are driving your car in the remotest place of india and uh, unfortunately the fuel gets emptied in your car and there is no petrol pump what is the life hack yes sir so this is the life hack so every traveler they carry a pipe because that is the emergency situation so if you're going to the long journey beyond the city you must carry pipe a small pipe okay and most of the truck drivers they carry that pipe because their journey is their life is on the road and they have to face that kind of uh, action sometimes so what they do is they put the pipe in the tank of some other truck okay this is the liquid so liquid will rise on the tube will flow and this will keep on happening without any extra effort the only rule is the point where you are sucking the liquid and the point where you are releasing the liquid the release point must be below the point of so it means if this is the tank height of the car 
the pipe must be below this height. That's it. So the exit of the pipe must be below this. So need not to be like this. This is just for the demonstration, but you can just take a tube like this. And that's it. So it is also used by taking the water up out of a drum. So let's say if you have a drum, you have a bucket, you can do this uh, very often. Okay. How you can do this? So the only job is just suck the air in the tube. So one side it is in the liquid. The other side you have to just suck in the air. And the moment you suck the air, the liquid will start rising inside it. There is no way out. They have to rise. This is H1. And we can prove that H1 must be less than H2 because we know that the liquid will flow from left to right if the pressure at this point is more than pressure at this point. So P1 must be more than P2, correct? For the flow to take place in this direction. Yes, so how to find the P1? So we can add the equation of the pressure we don't know what is P1, but let's say this is P1, which we don't know at that location because the pressure is not only due to the liquid, but uh, pressure is also due to the, the wall of the container. So we generally do not realize that even a wall can create the pressure. Correct? It can create. Yes, sir. So that's why the ends uh, the pipes are smaller radius, the water moves faster. Yeah. So here we know the pressure is atmospheric at the level. So P1 plus rho G H1 is P8. And similarly, if you write here P2 plus rho G H2 is also P8. So we can say that uh, because uh, P1 is more than P2, since uh, P1 is more than P2, so what is P1 by the way? It is P ATM minus rho G H1 is more than P ATM minus rho G H2. All will cancel out. I can say minus H1 is more than minus H2, so H1 is less than. So that is the mathematical condition for the siphoning action to take place. And we have to make sure that for the given liquid, it, it is less than the, the value calculated by comparing the relation. So here we have done this calculation for water. So if we have some other liquid, then we have to carry, calculate, recalculate the value. So H1 cannot exceed, okay? So essentially to take the water from the bottom to the top, Okay, you use motor. And what is the role of motor? So motor role is to suck the air only. So they create the partial vacuum and that is how they throw the water. Okay, so that is how the entire process works. Okay. Now the water within the earth, like if it, we have the ground water, it is anyway below the earth's surface. So the pressure is anyway high. So the moment you drill a hole into the earth, water will come out. Or at least water will rise through the hole. That is called the bore well. And if the water is not rising till the surface, you can attach a motor and then you can suck the water from the bore well into the tap. And then you can put it into a tank and you can do all those basic stuff. So the, the fluid dynamics is very important. So we, if you have the like the ONGC or any the the like the, the natural wall extraction of the form, so their entire you can say the setup uh, requires a very complex fluid dynamics methods to do the things okay in a smoother way, and they hire the best of mechanical engineers and uh, yeah we have some great uh, mathematician in IIT Bombay and there's something a uh, branch in IIT Bombay called the piping branch so they design the complex piping circuit for the flow of fluids and these piping circuits are employed in uh, 
big building high rise buildings it is not uh, uh, like created by the layman rather there is a uh, they take the sessions from the forms they give money to those professors they design and they re implement and you know, things are hidden from the real world so it goes it takes a lot of effort to design this piping system for efficient water flow uh, without getting hindered by the pressure difference so anyway this is the world of uh, fluid dynamics we'll explore things as it comes and uh, it's an easy chapter to be very honest not at all difficult the only thing is you have to derive things from the laws of motion but the right things in terms of density and all that is the only difficulty you may have in the very beginning but after some time and some practice you feel this chapter is pretty easy so see you in the next lecture sir okay sir sir i have a doubt yeah, what mm -hmm. sir if we take a bottle and we come uh, we uh, fill it fully uh, with water then uh, the pressure if exerted you take, by if you take a if you take a water bucket no uh, a bottle yeah something closed a bottle a bottle but yeah go ahead then uh, uh, the upper part of the wall uh, or the yeah the wall of of that bottle will experience less pressure than the down yeah definitely definitely and so if we tilt the bottle and we keep it uh, like sideways hmm. uh, and yeah, pressure on the pressure on the bottom will decrease oh. definitely yes sir and if you keep it horizontal then pressure will be least okay all right guys see you in the next bye sir thank you sir